All right, well, welcome everybody. Again, uh, this is a program of the Hadley Historical Society. We are located at 12 Middle Street, up the road a, a little bit. And um, this is the last of our three programs that we're giving in 2024. We also have open house on the third Sunday of every month through October, I think it, it is this year. Love to have you come visit and see uh, our uh, collection of artifacts, photographs, memorabilia on the town of Hadley and surrounding area. So today's program is uh, Montgomery, the Montgomery Rose family and the floral industry in Hadley. Um, before we launch into that, I would like to acknowledge, whoops, um, some of the uh, programs and local businesses that have uh, supported our programs, programming this year. We've received money uh, grants from the Mass Historical, I'm sorry, the Mass Cultural Council and the Hadley Cultural Council, also from Divine Overhead Doors and Bermucci Construction in Hadley to support our program. So we greatly appreciate uh, their, their help. Now the program um, was put together as a result of are coming across some uh, glass negatives from the Montgomery family that were left in the house that they owned and built in 1910 on North Maple Street. I don't know if anybody here is familiar with that house. It's pretty hard to find now. It's in deep in the woods. And we'll show some pictures of the house in a bit. But the house was sold in uh, 2000 to the Trigg family by the remaining Montgomery's. And the Triggs lived in it for 20 years. And in the attic was a, a case, a, a, a trunk actually, uh, and a box of uh, some memorabilia from the Montgomery family, uh, and particularly glass negatives, which are the old fashioned way of taking pictures. A lot of the uh, Howes brothers have taken pictures uh, on glass negatives of houses in Hadley and. And, and other people have done that, and they're, they're quite amazing to see the quality of the pictures that still remain on those glass plate negatives. So there were almost 200 of them, uh, and also some other regular photographs. The owner of the house, the person who bought it two or three years ago, Stephen Tixera and his family, I don't know if they're here today or not. They're on their way. Oh, they're coming, so okay. Is, my parents owned it, hi, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I'm Lauren, this is Michelle and Jerry. Are you the Triggs? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, Great, right, thank you, appreciate it, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, these uh, glass negatives were left in the house, uh, and um, when Stephen saw them and he knew what they were, he scanned them for us and he brought them to the Historical Society and asked us if we were interested in them, of course, of course we, we were, and uh, especially when we got a look at, at, at the pictures of, um, they were taken mostly around the 1900s to about the 1930s. Uh, we haven't been able to identify all of them. We've identified quite a few of them and the people in them. Um, we're still working on some other um, places and people in the pictures. But at any rate, um, we were very excited to get our hands on these glass negatives and to have them scanned for us by Stephen. Um, we want to acknowledge him and the Triggs for formally donating them to the Historical Society for our care and for and it's the basis of uh, the program. Once we got a look at that, we got very interested in, well, you know, the family, and then, of course, the business that they ran, which was very important in Hadley. Uh, so we decided to put together this program on the Montgomery family and also the floral industry. They were not the only, uh, well, let me back up a bit. Uh, the Montgomery started the Montgomery Company um, greenhouses in 1910 in Hadley. They were involved in the floral industry and growing roses for decades prior to that. And I'll get into that a little bit when we get started. But um, uh, they, so they established this business um, in 1910. And for 50 years, uh, they were a huge commercial grower of roses and other flowers, uh, probably one of the biggest in the country. And then along with them, a few years later, in the 1920s, Butler and Allman, who started in Northampton, 
established their own greenhouse complex in Hadley, and they did the same thing, although they specialized more in gardenias than, than roses, but they did everything. Uh, there was also Jeffrey Amherst, uh, uh, florist, and Keys, other floral um, people in the business congregated and operated in Hadley for the, basically the first half, three quarters of the 20th century. And they, they were the biggest business in, in Hadley for many, many years. There was any, nobody paid more taxes or were valued higher than those greenhouses. And of course now they're all gone. Now we have the, uh, the malls are there. But before the greenhouses, there was basically nothing except pasture land. Is that Stephen? <coughs> Stephen, this Stephen Tixera has, I, I, without Stephen, this, there would be no program. Stephen, thank you again for donating. <laughs> and we're only gonna show a small, a small percentage and portion of the photographs that we have um, uh, that Stephen scanned for us. So without further ado, let's get rolling into the uh, program. This is a, um, the Montgomery Com Company sign that stood in front of the greenhouses. This picture was taken in 1937. And we know who those people were, uh, or are, were. Uh, we'll show this picture again in a, in a bit. So, uh, and I do want to acknowledge our sponsors. Thank you again. So this is a photo that was taken about 1898, we think, in Natick. Uh, this is the Montgomery family um, from Natick. The gentleman in the middle, and I, my pointer's not working, so I'm just gonna wander over here. This gentleman is Alexander Montgomery. He was born in Scotland. He was a professional gardener for years and years in England and in Scotland. He migrated to this country in the mid 19th century, uh, and he was a rose grower. That's what he specialized in, but he worked on big estates in, in the United Kingdom. He came over, he married um, Elizabeth, was it Margaret? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Hill, um, who was also from Scotland, and they had five children, all born in Natick. This is Alexander William, or Alexander Jr. Uh, this is um, William Montgomery, and this is Robert Montgomery. This is Catherine Montgomery, and this is Anne Montgomery. Uh, the, um, there's so many Alex, Alexanders in this family, and also Anne's, that if I mess them up, please forgive me, because it's very hard to keep them all straight. Uh, Alexander Sr., I'm going to call the father, Alexander Sr., uh, worked, when he came to this country, worked for the Wabin Rose Company. This is a picture not of the Hadley greenhouses, but the Wabin, you can see the Wabin Rose sign up there. This is uh, lo located, and I haven't been able to figure out exactly where it is. In, somewhere in Natick, Sherborne area. There doesn't seem to be any record of it. <laughs> But that I've been able to find. But he worked there for decades. That's, that's the Alexander Sr. and his, one of his dogs. And he uh, managed the, the company. He ended up managing it, working there for years. Um, and that's where he, he learned the trade and practiced his trade of growing roses. This is a picture of him in Natick, we believe, because of the he, wasn't, he didn't have the gray beard yet, which he did when he got to Hadley. Now his son, Alexander William, or Alexander Jr., went to Mass Aggie out here from Natick. He grew up in Natick, graduated from Natick High School, went to Mass Aggie, Mass Agricultural College, MAC, uh, graduated in the class of 1898. And he, was, he studied floriculture. And he had worked with his father in Wabin and trained, and so he was a noted um, rosarian, even at a young age. This is a picture, he was on the board of directors for the Index, which was the yearbook for the Mass Aggie College, which we have the copy of over there on the table. And this is him right here. And uh, 
is another picture of him. He was in the, he's not in the Civil War. This is a Civil War uniform, or it looks like a Civil War uniform. He was, none of them fought in the Civil War, but this was the Corps of Cadets for Mass Agricultural College. They took it seriously then. In fact, if you graduated from the course of uh, uh, study as a cadet, which he did, he could have been commissioned as an officer in the Army if that's what he chose to do, which he didn't. It was like ROTC, okay? But anyway, he cut a fine figure in, in the uniform. This is about 19, 1898. <clears throat> this is a picture, again, of, of Alexander Jr. Now, he and his father both hybridized and grew roses. That's what their specialty was. In fact, this gentleman wrote the book on growing and hybridizing roses. That's the book. It's over there on the table. Now, his father, he based the book on what his father had developed and, and done. He wrote this in 1904 when he was 25 or 26 years old. So he was, they were serious people and they spent a lot of time and energy uh, working, uh, developing the best, best roses that you could possibly develop. Now in 1910, Alexander William and his brother Robert decided to start their own company. Alexander, from having studied and lived here during college, fell in love with the Hadley soil. Like, who el you know, what else is new? <laughs> and decided it would be a great place to, to grow roses using the clay soils and cow manure a mixture. And he was right. <clears throat> so they started the business in 1910. He, uh, Alexander Jr. was the general manager, and his brother Robert uh, was the treasurer, and the father, who still was working back in Natick, was the president. Okay, he didn't. The father didn't come out until 1916 or so. But Alexander Jr. built this house in 1910 on Maple Street, North Maple Street. You cannot see it from the street anymore. Um, it's a gorgeous. Shingle style house, very unusual for Hadley. Hadley, most of Hadley houses, the older houses are colonial style. This was built in 1910 in a very um, uh, popular uh, style. You'll see a lot of this along the seacoast now, this shingle style craftsman. Um, it's, it was a pretty elegant house in 1910. It's still a very elegant house. And Stephen Texera, who owns it, is taking good care of it. This is what the house looked like in 1910. This is what it looks like today. This is the inside. Not too many places were built like this, or are built like this anymore. So it's a classic. It's on the National Register, National Historic Register. And uh, it's just a, a, an amazing thing that they managed to build in 1910 when they were starting off with the company. Now these are the three um, officers, the Montgomerys, uh, Alexander Sr. in the middle, Robert, the brother, or the son, and his brother, Alexander Jr. And now I, I should mention that Robert uh, is a graduate of MIT. So, and he was the treasurer, the money man, I, I, I guess you could say, uh, of the operation. This is their formal look. This is their informal look. <laughs> nice looking family, I think, all along. even the descendants. Oh yeah, I want to, I want to acknowledge that some of the, uh, the descendants of the Montgomery's are here and helped us put together the, the program and gave us some of the memorabilia. I want to acknowledge Liz Mokehi and her sister, Christina, Christina uh, uh, who are here. They are um, uh, descendants of the Montgomery's. I'll go into that part a little bit later. So anyway, here's the, these, these gentlemen. These are all from the glass plate negative <coughs> photos. This is building the greenhouses, one of the greenhouses in Hadley. Uh, they, they, they own 52 acres. And of course, everybody knows where it was, right? right? Home Depot yeah. is there now. Butler and Almond, which was next, next to them on the other side of North Maple, is where McDonald's is. 
we'll show you some, some pictures as we go along. So this is them building the greenhouses, probably 1910 or so. This is an aerial of the Montgomery, and an early one. You can see this is Route 9. Uh, Maple Street is off the, the, the picture, it doesn't show. But this is, uh, I think there were 10 or 11 greenhouses uh, and their power plant. And you can see there's nothing, absolutely nothing around them. It's another aerial of the same. This is a little bit later. I think this was, might have been in the late 70s or 80, might, might be 83. And again, Route 9 in the front. We're looking, nor uh, we're looking north, okay, towards Sunderland. Uh, this is North Maple Street over here. That's the but you can just see some of the Butler and Almond um, greenhouses over there, but this is the Montgomery, Montgomery Company. Route 9, you can see not much, not much around them. I think, well, this is a parking lot, so one of the malls must have been gotten, getting built across the street. This is a view of the greenhouses over here and the Mount Holyoke Range from the house in, in, a, in and around 1910 or 15. You can see there's nothing. Right now it's all woods and, and obviously the malls. This is Alexander Sr. in the greenhouse. He came out here in 1916 when he left his job or left his work in, at Wabin and became part of the operation here in Hadley. There he is at, the, at his desk. I don't know what happened to that desk. It would be nice to know. <laughs> but he looks pretty comfortable there. And this is Alexander Sr. on the right and Alexander Jr. or Alexander William on the left. They, these were the, the, the Rosarians of the family. They created sold, built a business, and created um, amazing, amazing flowers. And their flowers, their roses were award-winning. They were um, the best roses that, that uh, money could buy. And they, they were pretty expensive. They sold them for a good price. Talisman, they won many awards, by the way. Uh, this case here, you'll be able to see this afterwards. The family has uh, generously uh, loaned some of these medals that they won. Uh, I think there's 10 or 11 of them for the different rose varieties that they created, mostly in the 20s and 30s. And they're in the case, the actual, med the actual medals. And one of them was the uh, Calvin Coolidge Gold Medal this is 1929, I believe, awarded to the Montgomery Company in Hadley, Mass. For the new rose talisman, this is the talisman rose created in 1929. This rose was a sensation when it was created. It was, in fact, it would even was um, shown on or used in advertising for oranges in California. This is an, uh, one of the placards that we got from the family. And uh, needless to say, it was a very popular rose. I am told that uh, in the 40s, many local women who were married, including my mother-in-law, married in the 40s, had this rose in their bouquet. It was very common then. You, can't find, you can hardly find this rose anymore. Um, we've been looking to see if we can recreate it. But uh, this was, was a gorgeous uh, specimen. That's the medal. The, the Gertrude Hubbard Medal awarded by the American Rose Society to the Montgomery Company for the Rose Talisman as the best rose of American origin introduced in the past five years, 1929. And this is just one of many medals that they won for the different roses. Talisman's probably their fam most famous. There's also a Hadley rose and uh, several others. 
This is uh, the Priscilla Rose. It has an interesting story, and it's, it's accounted in, a, in one of the books that we have on the table. Priscilla, you can see how a, what a gorgeous flower that is. Uh, that was developed by Montgomery, the Montgomery um, Company, uh, and I think it was about 1929. Um, and, but they never marketed it because it, didn't, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. I mean, it was obviously beautiful, but it, it, uh, there was something about it didn't last long enough or the colors faded or they were not satisfied with it. And um, to the amazement of the rest of the industry, that they just let it go, despite spending you know, a lot of hours and time and money to develop it, but it just didn't come up to their standards. So they, the, in one of the books, they wrote a whole chapter on the saga of the Priscilla Rose and why it didn't, why it didn't meet the standards of Montgomery, although I think it's quite lovely. Now, uh, I mentioned before, I think, what a big company Montgomery was in Hadley. This is the valuation and tax booklet put out by the town of Hadley for 1929. And in it, it, um, it mentions the Montgomery Company and the valuation of their property and greenhouses was $105,000 and they paid $2,900 in taxes. Nobody in no other company or person or business associated with the town was even close to this amount of money, except for Butler and Elman, which is about half as big. I mean, the, the, the next biggest company, Turner's Falls Power and Electric, 41,000 in valuation, and they paid 1,000 in taxes. So Montgomery Company and, and also Butler and Elman, they were the biggest taxpayers for years in the early 20th century in Hadley, and they also employed 60 to 100 people, probably half of whom were from Hadley. So this was a big thing, a big business um, in Hadley that people kind of have forgotten about, but we should acknowledge what the town owes to, to them, starting from scratch in 1910. And in 1929, they're far and away the biggest company and taxpayer in town. Now, there's some pictures from the family, from the Montgomery family. We think this is Robert. And one of these young ladies is probably his wife. We're not sure exactly. This was probably taken in Natick when they were dating or, you know. And this is what, of course, people did in the 1910s and 20s for entertainment. Not too much. You don't see that too often anymore. This adorable little girl, we don't know exactly who she is. We think that's Anne, the younger sister, and this is a native. She's, she's all decked out in her Scottish attire. Quite pleased with herself. This is Robert's wife, Anna. This is one of the many Annas, Annas or Anns. And she was kind of a fancy lady. Um, this is her in riding gear. This is Robert and Anne in their car. Stephen, I forgot the name of the car. You told me what it, what it was. Do you remember? I did. Army or something. Yeah, it's a. It's like a not a Stanley Steamer. It was a pretty fancy car for the 1920s. It was a REO um, Steamwagon. Is that what it was? The REO Steamwagon. Okay. So they tooled around in this. Here they go. Yeah, successful young Hadley people. This is uh, Robert and Anna's young daughter, Aunt, another Anna. And I think that's her grandmother, um, the maternal grandmother. Uh, they lived on wood, they actually lived on, in Amherst. Robert and the senior, Alexander Sr., when they came to, to, Hadley, uh, to Hadley to work, they didn't live in Hadley. Alexander Jr. did in the big house. They lived on Woodside. They owned a couple of houses on Woodside. Uh, Drive, I think it is, up in Amherst, not too far from it, right next to Amherst College. And that's, this is the street. This is the same little girl for July 4th. <laughs> she, 
She was probably mortified when she saw this picture. <laughs> now, this is Alexander Jr.'s family. He had, four, four, he had three daughters and a boy. This is his wife in the middle. This is Grace Montgomery. This is Marion Montgomery. This is Doris Montgomery. And that's Ro Alexander Hill. OK, Alexander Hill, remember him. Most of the pictures that were taken were of Alexander. <laughs> he was a cute little six-year-old boy around 19, he was born in 1910 when they came out here. And this is in front of the nice house. Again, these are, his, these are Robert and his sisters. You see he's got a camera. You see a lot of pictures of his cameras. Another picture of them on the grass and near the house. Again, Alexander Hill, Doris, Marion, Grace. Nice picture of them. There's some, one of her friends is in the middle, don't know who that is. This is Doris taking a picture of Alexander Hill. This is a picture of Doris and Alexander Hill taking pictures of the bunnies. Isn't that cute? And this is a picture of Alexander with his camera. Never been able, I don't know, we haven't figured out what the, name, what the brand of the camera is. Probably the best the money could buy. There he is with his sled in the wintertime. He's working in the fields. It's like a tobacco barn, not a greenhouse back there. This is, this is uh, Alexander Hill and Anna, his cousin, best buddies. Woodside Avenue. Now, the family vacationed all over the New England area. We have pictures of them in Boston on the swan boats um, and various seaside resorts. I'll just show you a couple of them. We haven't been able to figure out exactly where they vacationed. I suspect well, this is one on the beach. Um, that might be Old Orchard Beach up in Maine, maybe, or someplace in uh, Rhode Island. I mean, there were plenty of these in the 1920s. These resort towns with the amusement parks were pretty common. Now there's only a couple, well, Old Orchard Beach, I don't even think it has the roller coaster anymore. But uh, anyway, we've been trying to figure out where that is. But those are the two cousins. And this last picture, this is a typical New England resort town of the 1920s. Again, don't know where that is. If anybody knows where that is, let me know. It's either, it's, it, it's not Cape Cod because you can see the lousy beach. The rocky beach, it might be Maine, it might be Rhode Island. Um, anybody got any ideas? Where? Hampton? Oh, Hampton Beach, yeah, oh, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're, we're still going to try to figure out where all these pictures are from. This kind of a, but it, but it, shows, it shows the horses and buggies, people in the long dresses. This is a bygone age. What was that? Nope. Was it, was it a question? Nope. Okay. All right. So now uh, we're going to move into the other company, show you some pictures from Butler and Elman, which is the other big company in Hadley. And oh, I also mentioned that quite a few of the things that I'm showing you on, on the, uh, in the slideshow are actually located on the tables up front and in the case. The case has the medals. That far table's got mostly Montgomery Company, Montgomery Family, artifacts, memorabilia, photographs, newspaper articles. And this table here has got mostly Butler and Ullman. Um, oh, I should also mention before we go turn to Butler and Ullman, uh, in 1959, or let me back up a little bit, the Alexander William, um, the one who went to Mass Agricultural College and who really ran the company with his father. He did, was not, he did not live a long life. 
He died in 1927 at the age of 52. And his father outlived him only by three or four years. He died in 1931, I believe. Interestingly, Alexander William died, um, or he had a, I think it was a stroke. He was out hunting with one of his good friends, A.J. Hastings, in Amherst. They was out hunting, and he, got, he felt ill, he felt bad, came home, and he passed away that same day. Must have been a cerebral hemorrhage or a stroke or something like that. Um, but it's interesting that they, they hung out with the Hastings. Uh, and then the father carried on the business uh, for a few years. Uh, the son, Alexander Hill, a little boy that we saw, he, um, he graduated uh, from Amherst High School in 1929. He was only 17 when his father died. And he went right into the business. He never went to college. Actually, I think I am going to show you some more pictures. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm not going to start with Butler Island yet. Not quite done with the Montgomery's. But in any case, uh, they kept the business going. And in 1959, they sold it to the Johnson family. And we'll show you. What killed the company, the business, not just for the Montgomery's, but for the Johnsons and the, the Almonds, was um, foreign, foreign competition and the price of fuel to keep the greenhouses going. That's pretty much what, what did them in in the 80s, 90s. But they, it lasted till well into the 70s and 80s. All right, let me continue with the slideshow. So I just want to show you some uh, other pictures. This, this is the, both girls, all three girls, I'm sorry, uh, Grace, Marion, and Doris, all graduated from Hopkins Academy. The boy graduated from Am Amherst High School, Didn't go, did not go to Hopkins for some reason. But this is, this is Grace. And this is Mary in that class of 1917. They actually combined two classes at Hopkins, even though they were a year apart, but they graduated the same year because they, they combined the class. 1917, I think it was. That's Doris from uh, her senior class picture in 1920. This is a picture of Grace. I think it's in front of the old gym at Hopkins. This young man right here is Bill Dwyer, senior. Not the Bill Dwyer who married to Linda Sanderson, but his father. They were in the same class at Hopkins. And that's a picture of Grace, a little bit older, around the time she got married. Grace Montgomery married John Callahan who people might remember, they lived on Bay Road. This is the first John Callahan. The son is this young fella, John Callahan Jr., who I'm sure people, if they don't remember him, they should. John, John Montgomery Callahan was a lawyer. He graduated from Hopkins Academy. He went to Notre Dame. He worked in the Kennedy Johnson administration in 1963-64, in he was actually involved with the Bay of Pigs, getting the prisoners back to the country. Um, he later was a, an assistant U.S. attorney in Boston, and he was also a, uh, the district attorney for the Northwest region here in Western Mass. He was well known for his good works, for uh, helping uh, to set up uh, representation for indigent people who couldn't afford lawyers. Uh, he was president of the Mass Bar Association. He was a big deal, and still is, really. Also was a Marine Corps veteran, I should mention that. Served, served with the Marines before he became a, um, a big time lawyer. And uh, he lived in South Hadley, unfortunately, but <laughs> we won't hold that against him. He didn't move to South Hadley, but he grew up on the farm, which is the old food bank farm on Bay Road. Oh, one other thing about 19, 1918. A lot of these pictures are in the late 1900, uh, 19, 1916, 17, when the girls were in, in, in uh, high school. And this is, a, this is we think, 1918. This is Rob, uh, Alexander Hill in his little uniform, 1918. Remember, World War I was raging. Okay, 
So there's a picture, uh, I don't know where this is from. This is, this is some troops marching a parade, probably maybe it's Fort Devens. Why they had it? I'll tell you why I think they had this picture. Well, of course, 1918, the war was over. People, the boys are coming home. And uh, the family knew somebody. None of them served in World War I, but they knew somebody. This is Daphenia Cook Barlow. The Barlow family is also very important, Hadley family. They were best friends with the girls. She was best friends with the, with the sisters. Gradu also graduated from Hopkins. Unfortunately, and she married, she was married to a, uh, a fella who um, um, ended up in the army, went over to England with the troops. He came back okay. While he was there, 1918, you know what else was going on in 1918? The flu. The flu. She died of the flu in October 1918 and uh, while he was serving overseas. They had her picture in, in, the, in the, uh, the effects that we received from the family. Delphinia, Delphinia's picture is in there, and it identified her. Most of the pictures that we have, nobody identifies who they were, but they identified her. So she must have been important to them, to the sisters particularly. She's buried in Hadley now. Alexander Hill. Graduated, as I said before, graduated from Amherst High School in 1929, two years after his father died. And this is his high school picture. <clears throat> his father, uh, as I said, died in 1927. This is a reunion of the Mass Agricultural College, probably 1920. That's Alexander, that's the father, Alexander William, in the back row. Love the hats. <clears throat> this is the uh, Alexander Sr. and his wife in retirement. One more picture of, there's the Alexander Sr. with his uh, Tam O'Shanter Scottish hat tending to his evergreens, uh, probably in the a couple of years before he died. And this, is, this picture is Alexander Hill, the young boy, the five-year-old, six-year-old, that we saw in many of the pictures. This is him maybe in 19, late 1950s, 1960s maybe. He ended up, after they sold the company in 59 to the Johnsons, he still worked uh, in the business. I don't know if he worked for the Johnsons, he may have, but he definitely worked at UMass. And he taught school, at, he taught floriculture at UMass. And he worked in the greenhouses at UMass. So this is him in, in later years. He died fairly young too, 1976. I think he was 66, I think, when he passed away. But this is a good picture of him. Picture of a worker in the greenhouse. Don't know who this gentleman is, but it's typical. Except usually the pictures of the workers are they're bent over, you know, uh, and you'll you'll see some of those pictures later. But especially Butler and Elman. And again, this this picture that we started off with, and uh, someone was telling me that their mother is in this picture. Was that you, uh, <laughs> Diane Bai? Yeah. Diane Bai's mother is one of those sleeves. The one on the right. Stacia. Stacia. Yeah. So this picture was taken in 1937. Okay, so now the uh, um, Butler and Allman. This is Carl Allman. So Butler and Allman were two gentlemen who started the business in Northampton, and their sons carried, carried. this is one of the sons. Uh, they, they built their greenhouses in 1926, approximately. This is a picture of the Butler and Allman greenhouse. Again, this is Route 9. This is North Maple. The Montgomery uh, greenhouses are off the picture to the, to the left. And this is the Butler and Almond greenhouses. Again, this is where, about where the McDonald's is right now. Somebody said that this building here is the Cozy Corner. Anybody remember that? It could be. I wouldn't know. It's before my time. But you can see it was about the only business on Route 9. 
at the time, besides the greenhouses. And we're looking north. Another picture uh, a little bit later, Butler and Almond greenhouses, North Maples on the top, Route 9's on the bottom. This might be a McDonald's. I think a McDonald's is on this side of the street. Or Bonanza. What is it? Who is it? Bonanza. OK. And anyway, that's, that's where that is. Again, we're looking up North Maple Street to the right. This is another shot of Butler and Almond looking sort of east. This is the Montgomery greenhouses. This is Butler and Almond. That's Howard Johnson's up to the top. And that's still there. This is the truck that they ran around in, in Butler and Almond. This is the workforce, Butler and Almond's workforce in 1938. And every one of those people is identified. Half of them are from Hadley. If you want to see who they are, we have the picture and the list of people on the floor. There's Eddie Foreman's family's in there. Other people you'll, you'll recognize. And Butler and Almond also won many, many awards. This is 1936, 1937 for flower shows, mostly gardenia, yeah, Hadley. And their gardenia was called the Hadley gardenia. And they, both companies sold millions of flowers. They shipped them all over the country, up to Canada. They're, it's amazing business. This is Clarence Mitchell, who was the greenhouse manager for Butler and Almond for 50 years. These are the workers working, backbreaking. I think we have some of these people identified in some of the pictures on the tables. These are the gardenias. This was developed for the bicentennial, 1976. The tu it's not a gardenia, it's not a rose, it's a tulip, I think. <laughs> the uh, pride of Hadley. Now the business, as I mentioned before, the business was sold for, by the Montgomery family in uh, 59 to the Johnson family. That's Ted Johnson and his brother Alden. Uh, and they operated it till about the 2000s. And that's the end of that slideshow.